Today we are going to be discussing credit scores, what they are, how they're calculated, and what they're used for. Given the subject matter, we need to provide a disclaimer, so let's get that out of the way. The information provided in this video is for general informational purposes only and should not be considered as legal or professional advice. The content presented is based on personal experiences, research, and general knowledge in the subject matter. The full disclaimer is included in the video description. Thank you for your patience. Now let's get started. Many people know they have credit scores, but you may not know what it is or how it can impact you financially. This is something that is very important to know and should be a part of anyone's basic financial literacy. A credit score is a prediction of your credit behavior, such as how likely you are to pay a loan back on time based on information from your credit reports. When you apply for any type of credit, credit cards, mortgage, auto loans, etc., Companies will use your credit scores, yes scores plural, because you have more than one, to make the decision as to whether or not they will offer you the credit product you are seeking. The credit score goes beyond just determining whether or not you will be approved. It will impact the interest rate and credit limit you receive as well. The following factors are all things that are typically considered when it comes to calculating your scores. 1. Your bill paying history. Do you pay on time and at least the minimum due? 2. Your current unpaid debt. How do you owe other creditors? 3. The number and type of loan accounts you have. How many lines of credit and what types are they? Credit cards, auto loans, mortgages, personal loans, etc. 4. How long you have had your loan accounts open, also referred to as length of credit history. 5. How much of your available credit you're using, known as credit utilization. 6. New applications for credit 7. Whether you have had a debt sent to collection, a foreclosure or a bankruptcy, and how long ago, as previously mentioned, you have more than one credit score. There are three major credit bureaus, Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion. The scores between these will vary because not all lenders and creditors report information to all three bureaus. Many do, but not all do, all the time. In addition to these three, there are also reporters such as FICO and Vantage Score. Now let's dive into a bit more detail on some of the factors that determine those credit scores. First, payment history. If you are applying for credit, the creditor or lender is essentially trying to decide whether you will pay them back and on time. Naturally then, they are going to look at how you've repaid your credit in the past. This information can include credit cards, retail department store accounts, installment loans, auto loans, student loans, finance company accounts, home equity loans, and mortgage loans. This doesn't just include those, however. They are also going to look at missed payments, bankruptcies, and collection information. This also typically includes how late the payments were, how much was owed, and how recently you missed a payment. To add to this part of the score, it will also weigh how many of your accounts have been delinquent compared to how many accounts you have total. So, for instance, missing a payment on one account, out of 10 total accounts, has less impact than being late on 5 of 10 accounts' payments. Payment history also includes details on bankruptcies, foreclosures, wage attachments, and any accounts that have been reported to collection agencies. The payment history section, generally speaking, has the most impact on determining some credit scores. Secondly, credit utilization. Typically, this is expressed as a percentage. For instance, you have a total credit limit of 10000 among all your credit card combined. If you are carrying a balance of $5,000 across those cards combined, then you are utilizing 50% of your credit. Creditors and lenders are going to look at this number. They are going to be looking for usage of your credit, followed by paying it off. If you regularly carry large balances and make minimum payments, that can negatively impact your scores. Thirdly, types of credit used. This one is pretty simple. How many types of accounts or loans do have, including revolving debt, such as credit cards, and installment loans, such as mortgages, home equity loans, auto loans, student loans, and personal loans. Then how many of each of those types do you carry? It's good to show that you can manage multiple types of accounts. Fourth, length of credit history. This section of your credit history details how long different credit accounts have been active. Credit score calculations may consider both how long your oldest and most recent accounts have been open. Generally speaking, creditors like to see that you have a history of responsibly paying off your credit accounts. This is where I'm also going to discuss a trick for building the credit of young child. Most parents don't know that you can add your child as authorized user to your credit card, 
which means they have a credit card issued in their name that links to your account. If you do this for them, it will help build credit, and they don't even need to use the card. I would recommend speaking with your card provider to find out at what age you are able to do this. 13 is typically the minimum age, but some issuers don't specify an actual number. Food for thought and setting up your children for financial success, so long as you manage that credit account responsibly. Lastly, hard inquiries. Hard inquiries occur when lenders and creditors check your credit in response to a new application. A large number of hard inquiries can impact your credit score, so it's important not to apply for too many lines of credit at the same time. This next part is super important. If you are shopping for a new vehicle or mortgage loan or a new utility provider, the multiple inquiries generated by these processes are generally counted as one inquiry for a given period of time. That period of time may vary depending on the credit scoring model, but it's typically from 14 to 45 days. Something to think about when you are looking for your next car. Don't wait weeks between running your credit if you're shopping around. Also, if the dealership runs your credit multiple times to try and get you the best financing rates, it doesn't count as multiple hard inquiries. To wrap up this video, let's talk about how to get and maintain a good score. Pay on time, every time. This sounds pretty basic, but it's important. While it may sound daunting, there are options. Set up automatic payments or set up electronic reminders to make payments. If you've missed payments, get current and stay current. Don't spend up to your credit limit and stay there. Not only that, but consider the fact that closing unused cards can be detrimental too. If you close some credit card accounts and put most or all of your credit card balances onto one card, it may hurt your credit score. Think of the example used earlier. You have multiple cards that give you a total credit limit of $10,000, and you close some of them to consolidate debt and only have one credit card open. That could mean lowering your credit limit while still having the same amount of debt. If it's $5,000 like earlier, and you decrease your overall credit to $5,000 by closing and consolidating cards, you are now at 100% credit utilization instead of 50%. Experts advise keeping your use of credit at no more than 30% of your total credit limit. You don't need to revolve on credit cards to get a good score. Paying off the balance each month helps get you the best scores. Don't close lines of credit unless there's a good reason. You can keep it open and simply only use it once every few months for a small purchase and pay it off. A very simple strategy, especially if you set up auto pay. The longer your credit history, the better. Again, don't close credit cards you've had for years. If they are the oldest cards you have, they are providing you with a longer length of credit history. Space out your credit applications. In essence, apply for credit when you need it. Or at the very least, don't apply for multiple types of credit all at the same time. Credit scoring formulas look at your recent credit activity as a signal of your need for credit. If you apply for a lot of credit over a short period of time, it may appear to lenders that your economic circumstances have changed negatively. It's better to apply for it when you don't need it, over a longer period of time, and then you'll have it build up your credit, as well as have it ready and in reserve should the need arise. Finally, monitor your credit regularly. If you spot suspected errors, dispute them. If you have old credit card accounts you are not using, keep an eye on them to make sure that an identity thief is not using them. There are so many ways to check your credit now and it many are free. I personally use Credit Karma and I check my credit at least once a month. Make sure your scores are in line, watch them improve, make sure hard inquiries aren't showing up that you didn't approve, and sites like this one allow you to get offers for credit products that show you approval odds based on your credit. Also, using the site is free and it doesn't get much cheaper than that. Hopefully this has been informative and gives you a better understanding of what your credit scores are and how they work. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and comment. Financial literacy is so important and not enough people know how the system works to use it effectively. So spread the knowledge and as always, think freely, discuss openly.